What is up everybody? My name is Nick Cantrell and you are watching Subculture. On today's episode, I am gonna teach you how to make a midsole for a sneaker. And the purpose of this is to teach you how to make it functional so that you can actually create something and be able to make it work with your prototype in order to have something that you can wear around and actually test and really feel on foot how your design is working. So the process of this is uh, quite long and it's something that you need to really follow in order to get great results. Um, but in the end, you can make stuff that really works. I've been wearing this pair of shoes all week and it works great. So the midsole we're gonna be making today is made out of polyurethane expanding foam. Now this is something that is used in some footwear applications um, and the reason we're able to use it is unlike EVA foams, polyurethane foams um, can be made using a silicone mold um, in what is called the pour over method, which is basically mixing a part A and a part B and pouring it into a mold and having it expand. So you're gonna start out with what we call a positive. Now this is the shape of whatever you're gonna wanna be making. Um, I started with a 3D printed part that I modeled in Rhino. Um, that might be a topic for another video, but today we're gonna assume that you have the positive for your mold. Uh, this was 3D printed using a um, FDM 3D printer and sanded. And you really wanna make sure that the positive of your mold is perfect because the silicone and also the expanding foam you're going to be using is going to be picking it up to a T. So make sure this part is perfect. And also one of the note, it's fine if you do have undercuts in this design because unlike um, traditional footwear molds that use aluminum, uh, silicone is flexible so you're able to get away with undercuts and whatnot. The first thing you're going to be doing is building yourself a box. Now this box needs to be about a half inch um, wider and longer and deeper than your midsole is so that when you make a mold from your positive, um, there's uh, space on the sides um, to give it strength. I made this out of MDF wood and you're going to want to make sure that it can be taken apart and put back together with screws um, because you're going to be uh, taking out your mold, putting it back in a lot of times. So make sure that you drill out the holes and then screw them in and make sure this thing is going to last a couple times. From your box, you're going to pour silicone into it and you're going to end up with a silicone mold. Um, this is what we're going to be using to cast the foam into. You're going to pour foam into this and it's going to expand basically take the shape of, of whatever this is. And you're gonna pour foam into that and peel out your finished part. Now this part um, is gonna be polyurethane. It'll take a little while to cure. Um, you can use dyes in it to make it whatever color you want, but this is the end goal for us. And this is what will be um, glued onto other parts and uppers and outsoles and whatnot. Disclaimer, this process can be very expensive and time consuming. So make sure that you have A, know how much materials you'll need, uh, B, have enough money set aside to buy those materials and wait for shipping and whatnot, and also set aside a good amount of time to do trial and error and really get a great result. So this is something that you're probably going to want to spend you know, a good two to three weeks on to get a good result. Um, and you're going to have a lot of failures, um, but it will yield a good result if you really take your time and you're meticulous about it. So let's get started. All right, I'm gonna list out all the materials you're gonna to need to get together. First thing you wanna get is gloves because you don't want stickiness on your hands, glasses for protection. Sort of Clear 37 is the silicone I used. You just wanna get silicone that is clear and is also not super soft. Mixing containers for mixing your part A's and part B's together. Your mold box that can be taken apart is the right dimensions for the silicone you'll be using and also the drill to be able to take everything apart and put back together. A scale for accuracy. I use glue sticks for the pore spouts. You really want to make sure it's big enough. 
your mold positive of course and then mold release because you don't want things sticking together. You're going to start by running some tape along the top edge of your midsole. This is going to be our parting line. What you're going to do next is create a sharpie line about a quarter inch above that. That's where you're going to be cutting into to make your parting line through the clear silicone. Also attaching the glue sticks as pour spouts. You are then going to seal up your mold box to make sure that no silicone will escape. Make sure your midsole is half an inch away from all the sides of the mold box so that when you pour your silicone in there, it's not gonna touch and create a hole in your mold. I used popsicle sticks to make sure it was in place the whole time. Now, I didn't get this next part on video, but basically you're gonna be mixing these two parts together. You're gonna be measuring them out equally to make sure you have a correct one-to-one -one ratio. I used the scale for this. You're gonna be putting them together in the same container and make sure that you really take your time to mix these together because on one of my molds I didn't mix it as thoroughly and it came out a little soft. So really make sure you spend a full two minutes mixing it and then pour it in and try not to create any bubbles. I'll link this how-to video below in the description. This stuff takes about four hours to cure so make sure it's fully cured. Now we've got it out of our box and we're going to start cutting into it to create our parting line. This stuff's sort of clear so you're going to want to look for that sharpie line you drew on that piece of tape. Take a really sharp knife and start cutting into it and trying to make a really clean parting line out of that. Hold it up to a window if you can't see. Once you start cutting into it, you'll begin to see that once you cut that tape, it starts to really peel away and provide a really nice uh, hard edge. Make sure you do really take your time on this and really stick to that piece of tape line because if you cut into the actual part, that's where you're gonna have your parting line and it'll create some flashing that you don't want. Also a disclaimer that should be said, make sure you have the amount of silicone you need for this process because once silicone cures, you can't go back in and add more. So make sure you have enough silicone to fill this entire mold box. I did this by calculating the volume in Rhino. Now it's time for the second part, which is pouring that PU foam into the mold we just made. The PU foam I recommend is Flexit Foam 17 from Smooth On. You also want dyes because it'll be yellow if you don't dye it. Mold box and addition of a top which has holes cut out where the pore spouts are. This will create back pressure. You're also going to want to clamp because PU foam expands, so you want to clamp it down. You're going to want to measure this out very accurately because unlike the other silicone, this is a 2 to 1 ratio. This stuff expands three times the amount, so I use three times the volume of my midsole. I threw in some white dye to keep my midsole from turning yellow. This is So Strong Dye by Smooth On. You're going to want to mix the part A separately because once the part A and part B come together, you've got a very limited pot time. I am now mixing my part B with that white dye and I'm doing this before I combine the two because I want to make sure that white dye really disperses. Then pour that part A into the part B and start mixing very rapidly. You've only got 20 seconds of mixing so make sure this stuff gets mixed as fast as you can. Then what you're going to do is start to pour it over your mold and try to get it pretty even when you pour it in. Then you want to get an even surface coat and prevent bubbles, so I slosh it around very carefully, not getting the liquid above my parting line. This will make sure you don't have any bubbles in the surface quality. Then shut it, make sure that your silicone mold is fully sealed. Then put your piece of wood over the pore spouts and you're going to clamp it down because this stuff expands pretty rapidly, so you don't want it moving your part line and expanding the actual mold box. I threw some mold release around these little bubbles that are starting to expand because the stuff will stick to MDF. Two hours later. Now that our stuff is cured, it's time to take it out of its box and see what we got. I use a knife to cut off the little bubbles, then peel off the top, cut the bubbles off the mold, Peel the silicone off and then carefully peel it off from the sides and there you have it, your finished part.
Bonus, make a rubber outsole by using Real Flex 60 and using the exact same process I just used with the silicone mold and pouring it until it cures. And glue that onto your midsole. So do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe below. And let me know what you'd like to see next, um, whether it's making the upper of the shoe, whether it's 3D printing, whether it's 3D modeling, whether it's making carbon fiber, you name it. I'd love to do more videos um, and empower you to do dope Thank you.